What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023 Camera Tips and Tricks. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most of the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is go over all the actual cameras that we're getting here with the phone. And there are three of them in total. Now starting off with the front facing camera, that is 8 megapixels, and it is situated in this hole punch up top here. Then on the back of the phone, we have a dual camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then this phone does support portrait mode for both the rear and front camera, and in addition to that, we're getting 1080p video recording with both the front and rear cameras as well. Now Motorola does provide some really cool shortcuts to actually get to the camera app. The first one here is just to twist the phone, like that, and then it pulls up the camera. And then the second shortcut to get to the camera is not enabled by default, so I'll show you how to set that up, but basically involves double pressing on the power button. So what we're gonna do here is pull down the shade, go to the settings, which is that gear icon. From here, you're gonna go down to where it says gestures, and then you'll see further down here, double press power key, and right now it's set to do nothing, but you can see that you can have it launch the camera. So now, with that enabled, all you have to do is just double press on the power button, and then the camera now appears. And you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. So that's a very quick and easy way to get to the camera app. So now that we're on the camera app itself, I want to show you how to get to the various cameras that are offered here. So by default, it'll take you over to the main 50 megapixel camera, but keep in mind that it doesn't actually capture photos in the full 50 megapixels. To do that, you actually have to swipe over to the More tab and then access Ultra Res right here to take photos in that full megapixel count. And the reason why 50 megapixel photos are not the default is because images in that megapixel count take up way more space on the phone compared to the default setting. So basically, you're welcome to take 50 megapixel photos for all your photos, but keep in mind that your phone storage will fill up much faster. But heading back over to the main area on the camera app, to get to the macro camera, you're gonna tap on that button right there, and then with the macro camera, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. And then finally, we have the front facing camera. You can go to this button right there to flip around to that camera, and there's me right there. You can also take portrait selfies, and then you can also flip around to the rear camera to take portrait mode photos with that camera. Also, you can go here to adjust the blur effect. So if you want more blur, you can do that or less blur. And then with the front camera, you can do the same thing. So you can do that there. We also have this button up here, and that's for basically beauty mode, so it kind of smooths out everything. I prefer to have it on zero, but it really is up to your personal preference. Heading back over to the main camera, you can then go to this button for Google Lens. So when you go there, you can basically take a photo of any object, and it will search up that photo to see what it can find that's in common with it. So you can see it's finding similar plants to this one here in the search results, and some of them are almost completely identical. So this can come in handy in certain situations, especially if you're out in maybe the wilderness and you see a random plant and you're wondering what it is. Usually Google Lens does a great job identifying it. We also have this setting right here, and you can access a variety of different filters that you can add. So I definitely recommend trying out some of these to see if you like any of them. So just another option here. But checking out everything else in this bottom slider, moving over to the far left here, we do have slow motion. There's also, of course, video mode, which I'll go back to in a second. The regular photo mode, portrait mode. We also have pro mode. So you get a lot of other customizations such as the white balance and ISO. And then we have the more tab. So in the more tab, we have spot color. So I'll try that out right now. So basically you pick one color. So I'm gonna pick this blue background here and it keeps that color, but it makes everything else grayscale. And you even have a slider here to adjust that effect even further. And then back in the More tab, there's Night Vision, Panorama, Group Selfie, Ultra Res, which I already showed you. There's also Dual Capture, so if you want to capture both the front camera and rear camera at the same time, you can do that. You can also pick which camera is the dominant camera, just like this. So that's really cool. So I just took a photo using that setting, and then now you can see with the final result, which my eyes are shut. Let me try one more. <laughs> that's not that good. All right, let's try this out. There we go. Heading back over to here to the results, you can see there's my photo of me in the corner, and then you can see what's on the other side of me. There's also time lapse and then dual capture for video. But what's cool as well is that if you want to customize this bottom slider, you do have that ability. So heading back over to the More tab, you'll see this pen icon right there. Tap on that, 
And some of these you do have to keep down here, but other ones you can remove. So let's say I don't use portrait mode a lot, so I wanna get rid of that. I can move it over to the more tab, and then maybe I use ultra res a lot. So I'll take that, put it down here in this bottom slider, go to done, and then now you can see I can easily switch over to ultra res in the standard photo mode or from any other modes for that matter. But moving on, there's additional things I wanna show you. So you can see up above here, there's quite a few different options. So the first one is for the flash. You can have flash off, flash on all the time, or have it be on auto. There's also this mode here for auto night vision. So if you want that on, that will basically enhance the photos when taken at night. There's also HDR, you can have that off or on. There's also the aspect ratio of the photos. So three by four is the default, but if you want to do one by one, so square, you have that ability. You also have the ability here for nine by 16 or 16 by nine. That's great for video thumbnails, for example. And then the final option here is for the phone's full aspect ratio. You can also swipe down on the viewfinder to then access the timer. So there's three seconds, 10 seconds, or no timer, and then active photos. So active photos is kind of similar to Apple's live photos. So that might be something that you might want to try out. So then heading over to video mode, there's some other options as well. So you can have the flashlight be on at all times. That might be nice if you're recording in a really dark area. You can also go over here for stabilization. So you can have stabilization on. I'm not really sure why it's off by default, by the way. I feel like that's a really helpful feature when capturing videos. So that's there. You can also adjust the aspect ratio. So nine by 16 or 16 by nine is the default. But you can also go here to do the full aspect ratio of the phone. There's also the microphone mute option available too. So if you don't want any audio at all in your video, you can mute that, which could come in handy sometimes. So that's pretty nice as well. Another thing too that I almost forgot to mention is that Motorola phones are kind of unique in the sense that they actually allow you to take video in macro mode. Most phones that have macro cameras only let you capture photos. So that is cool that you can take macro videos if you do want to. Then from there, we can go over to the settings for the entire camera app, and there's a lot of good stuff here. Starting off with the AI settings up above. So some of these are enabled by default, but others are not. You can see, for example, enabled by default is Google Lens, which I already showed you, and then also shot optimization. But there's also auto smile capture. So automatically capture when everyone in the photo frame is smiling. So that's enabled there. I'm gonna flip around to the front facing camera. I'm gonna smile. There we go, took the photo. Let me smile one more time. There we go, took the photo again. We also have gesture selfie, so show your palm to take a selfie. Let's try that. Now this one is kind of hard to do with the camera in front of me, but let's try it. There we go. Then moving on to the photo settings here, you can see that there's selfie photo mirror. So if you want the photo to be mirrored when taking a selfie, you can do that. So we'll look at the results from that photo right now. Basically, it flips the selfie the other way. However, the default way that it's set to is really the probably regular way you'd want it to be. There's also the watermark. So you can see the first option here is timestamp, so it'll add the date and time. And then also you can add a full-on watermark here by adding in your name. So I'm gonna type in Kevin. Okay, we'll go back here and I'll capture a photo. There we go, we'll pull this up. So here we go, here's the photo. And you can see the watermark in the corner. So we have the Motorola logo, the name of the device, and then my name, and then we also have the date and time. There's also video settings. So go in here, you can enable high efficiency videos. So basically with that enabled, it might not be as compatible with certain other devices, but basically the file size will be a lot smaller. There's also capture settings. So go in here, there's quite a few options. There's quick capture, which I already showed you by twisting your wrist to open up the camera. There's also tap anywhere to capture. So capture by tapping anywhere on the screen. Let's try that. There we go, took the photo. So that feature works very well there. There's also shutter sound. So you probably noticed that when capturing a photo or taking a video, it does make a sound, which some people are not a big fan of. So if you want, you can mute that. So now it's silent. Going back here, there's also assistive grid. So I'll enable that and I'll also enable the leveler. So basically with assistive grid, it enables the rule of thirds here. So that could help you with setting up your photos. And then also there is a level here as well. And then another option here too is keep last mode. So open the camera with the last mode used. So if you find yourself customizing a lot of various modes on your camera app, but you're annoyed that it goes back to the default every time you open it, you can enable this to fix that problem. And then finally, you can save the location in the metadata of your photos. So a lot of different features here related to the camera app and the various cameras that we're getting with the Moto G Stylus 2023. But I hope you enjoyed this video on camera tips and tricks for this device. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. 
But this is Kevin here with the Moto G Stylish 2023, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.